good afternoon and namaste everyone uh, my name is uh, dv uh, i'm from uh, nolpur kawasati and so actually i born in uh, indigenous tharu community uh, in the buffer zone area very close to the national park and my childhood uh, actually i spent Uh, mostly in the jungle during the day time so jungle and river used to be uh, uh, our playground and jungle several different activities used to be our uh, sports and this is how my uh, like a uh, learning or um, uh, opportunity uh, i got uh, to get close to the closer to the wildlife and this is how my school like a uh, learning school is started so uh, talking about uh, jatayu vulture restaurant probably you all of you are aware about them so it is the restaurant for vultures not for human being so when vultures were declining very rapidly in nepal and then uh, vulture having vulture restaurant is one of the uh, the idea for conserving vultures by providing safe food so this is locally uh, created idea and from the beginning uh, government of nepal uh, the different sectors of government of nepal and technical and financial support is led by uh, bcn uh, and other like uh, and other uh, ngos ngos and iangos are supporting and uh, the, this is uh, this restaurant is run by community there are two different uh, like a uh, like a, uh, uh, a new old and old world vultures uh, like a, and a new old vultures occurred in um, uh, asia and then uh, and other countries and uh, sorry old world vultures occurred in asia and uh, other countries and new old vultures occurred in south america and uh, they are found all over Yeah, in the world beside australia and antarctica so there are 16 old world vultures and nine uh, species in south asia and all the nine species occurred here in nepal and seven species in uh, seven species new world vultures and uh, they are Uh, very important uh, like uh, for balancing ecosystem uh, religious um, importance like and also ecotourism and sky burial and as well as it is worth over uh, 11000 us dollar for cleaning of uh, one vultures uh, talking about their uh, biology so uh, their pairing is about uh, it uh, about 8 uh, to 9 months and they start nesting from uh, end of september early october and their incubation is um, 72 to 75 days and they lay egg only one egg at a time and then it takes about 120 days to fledge out the chicks from the uh, nest and there are six different species of vultures uh, resident in nepal and three species are uh migratory so one one of them is uh winter visitor which is known as a cinereus vulture um griffon vulture which is passes migrant and indian vulture which is vagrant species it was recorded uh, um in 2011 as a, a new species for nepal at the jatai restaurant site and these are the vultures of nepal and out of uh, globally threatened uh, bird species in nepal and five species are uh, uh, globally threatened birds are vultures and before uh, 1990 there used to be lots of vultures uh, in nepal and india so in nepal itself 10 to 16 lakhs and by 2001 and 2011 ad declined by 91% and in india itself 16 crore and population decline with 19, 97% by 
all because of uh, diclofenac sodium, which heavily gets used by farmers to treat their cattle. Once farm, uh, bulses, they eat freshly diclofenac used, used cattle's meat, and it makes their kidney failure. And the government of Nepal uh, has uh, like a, um, taken a legal action and then found substitute and then uh, um, um, in the act, so they have uh, <clears throat> declared like a three years prism or 25,000 um, uh, fine or both. And uh, so there are few like a uh, major uh, reasons that vultures are declining, one of the diclofenic, and then secondary cause uh, can be habitat loss, food scarcity, uh, poisoning, and electrocutions, and many unknown um, reasons. And uh, vulture conservation efforts in Nepal. So uh, in 2006, there was uh, alternative medicine found, which is known as a meloxicam, and and the Thai restaurant or vulture restaurant was established in 2006 as a first community managed vulture restaurant. And vulture breeding center was established in the National Park, Chitun National Park in 2008. And vulture conservation action plan was uh, endorsed in 2009-13 and 2015-19. And there are seven vulture feeding sites or vulture restaurants in Nepal and 76 districts are um, declared as a uh, diclofenic free districts. And our, uh, awareness campaign in the all level of people from grass level to government uh, officer, officer level, so was started in different area of Nepal. And vulture conservation uh, breeding center, so it was established in Chitwan because the, in the ratio or in the uh, way the, when they were declining and the government of Nepal and uh, BCN and all of us, we thought uh, they will completely wiped out from the earth. We have to save, save some species. That's why uh, some of the vultures were declined, uh, sorry, uh, collected from different parts of Nepal and kept in the breeding center. And they had started, they were raised there, and some of them they had started breeding there. And trapping and tagging. Before um, uh, releasing the vultures in, uh, in the uh, wild habitat or in the nature, so same amount of uh, vultures were. Uh, trapped and tagged wild vultures, especially just to see their movement, their activities, uh, and their association with um, uh, uh, captive birds. So this is um, a trap, and uh, they are, uh, here you will see the tagging, and then releasing the birds. And a captive vulture transferred to a soft release aviary. Once uh, environment become safe for the vultures. They were transferred from breeding center to soft release aviary at the Zatai restaurant. And um, this is how we transfer and then uh, release them back to nature after having three to nine month, months in the aviary. So this is the release program. So we have released six lot of um, vultures, all uh, about um, 59 birds and they are doing very well in the nature. So some of them have flown more than 200 kilometers with wild birds, and some of them have started breeding, pairing up with captive uh, birds, and some of them with wild birds. So after tagging this uh, uh, satellite tag, um, uh, but we came to know vultures that can fly that far in a day, or uh, also, um, um, uh, distance, like one of the vultures had flown uh, up to um, in uh, Pakistan border. So they have started nesting. So same thing, and uh, like a, a reason of uh, decline. So uh, several other reasons: carcass poisoning, electrocution, human uh, perception, and nest falling, disease, and unknown uh, reason. And poisoning is one of the carcass poisoning is big problem, 
recently two years ago we lost uh, 68 birds um, they died because of eating uh, dead poison do uh, dog electrocution problem so since we don't have much time so uh, later on so those who are interested um, uh, like a lot uh, learning about or if you need some more information about the vultures uh, uh, when we are free time uh, free so I'll be very happy to answer your questions or give you information so uh, just I'd like to tell you uh, like a few achievements like a just um, like a one of the achievement we had like a when we started the uh, program uh, people were very negative because of the uh, traditional belief and local perceptions and now they have become conservation partner they are not working for vulture conservation also they are taking part for other wildlife species conservation so and then this is first uh, vulture restaurant in nepal and the number of has is uh, number of the vultures has increased um, uh, to uh, like 72 in 2005 and uh, 511 in two, uh, 2023 and this number ha has also increased like uh, um, 21 in 2005 and 78 in 2023 so just glimpse of uh, vulture restaurants and uh, local people participating in the conservation program so this is how like uh, we turn the hide and vultures they come they feed and uh, we invite uh, visitors and then you'll see the skeletons. This is how they clean the environment so quickly. So, so tourism promotion program and then also uh, we are running several um, uh, livelihood improvement uh, programs in the community to sustain the uh, vultures and other, other wildlife uh, conservation awareness program. And this is like a habitat management so since we don't have much time so so this is community managed grassland so uh, nearly 200 hectares we have managed and then so it is it has become very good uh, place for research and other wildlife and for tourism as well and also people uh, not only wildlife is benefiting out of grassland also people early stage they harvest the grass for cattle fodder and they harvest the old grass for thatching and other purpose. Also, we have managed uh, white land, and you'll see the lots of rhinos and birds. And sorry. Okay, so thank you very much for your peaceful attention.
Namaste everyone. I would like to thank uh, Nayantara Didi and the entire team of Photo Kathmandu for providing an opportunity to talk about Indigenous Knowledge Project on behalf of KTK Belt. My name is Ganga Limbu. I am currently working in the KTK Belt Project as a Media, Outdoor Education and Indigenous Knowledge Program Officer. I'm from uh, I'm from the indigenous Limbu ethnic community. I grew up in this landscape, uh, a remote village called Mukden in eastern Nepal. Although the landscape the landscape was very harsh, and perhaps what you may you may consider backward, it was rich with learning experience for me. It was a place 
where I grew up listening to the sounds of the river, the birds playing with the stone and vines and running miles and miles through the forest. When I was in sixth grade, our family left the village and relocated to another village uh, in the plains called Yangsila. In 2015, I came to know about the Belt Fellows Program of KTK Belt Project. I didn't know much about uh, the project or what they were doing, but I was really interested in technology, so I joined. So I became the first youth fellow of this particular university, and my first assignment was to document the knowledge of local farmers. To do this, I took classes with uh, photographers in Kathmandu, organized by Photo Circle, and met with uh, Kishore Dai, Prasid Dai, uh, Nayantara Didi for the first time. Um, more uh, teachers as well, my, my mentors as well, where I, I, I have missed here. Um, and continue to learning uh, everything tech related from the sort of speed to uh, f stop to, f, uh, to storytelling through the lens. After all this training, I was given to the assignment uh, to start documenting indigenous knowledge along with our local teacher, Kumar sir, Dur Durga Dai, and Rajiv sir. So we started to film them talking about the uses of uh, the plants around them. Initially, uh, of course, uh, my focus was on the camera, collecting the, story, uh, the data, editing, and all technical aspects. But then, hours and hours we listened to and listen to the farmers. Then I started learning and understanding their perspective on each plant. I was amazed to hear the depth of their knowledge, their passion, uh, the techniques of communicating with the trees. They were excited to share this knowledge uh, with me, though I have now made over 100 videos. Today, I want to talk about some of the farmers whose stories inspired me. The first was Narvadra Vishwakarma, is 59, belonging to an indigenous minority caste group in Satyasale village in Yangsila. He was my favorite. Most of his life he had spent in the forest. Sometimes he would leave his house in Satisale and disappear for days in Sikhi forest. But everyone knew that was his real home. And eventually he would wander back. In the forest he connected with each and every vine, fern, seed and branches. He had deep respect and love for every plant which sustained him and gave him a way to survive for days there. The way he talked about the plants was so trustworthy and organic. Let me introduce uh, you, you to the second person who inspired me. Her name is Sunamaya Sankar, belonging to an indigenous minority caste group from Rangsa village, a mother of five children. I knew who she was, but I had no idea about all the stories of, uh, she had, of all the hardships she had survived. She believed that uh, the plants were the savior of her life and her lives of her family member. When there was no pharmacy, these plants were the pharmacy. She would point to a particular plant and tell me stories of how it saved her uh, child from a deadly disease. She spoke about each plant with reverence and sadness that the species were being lost. 
The third person is my father. He is my inspiration. Growing up, I knew he had faced many hardships, but I never realized he had such a deep knowledge about so many plants. When I told him I was documenting knowledge for future generations through video, immediately he smiled and started talking about the plants and their values and how uh, he treated me when I was sick growing up in Mukden. But today, my father is no more on this earth. Even so, I feel like he lives in these plants. The knowledge that he shared is still alive in me. Every time I see the plants he talked about, it reminds me that he is there. Let me take you to, the, to my father describing the plant he loved very much in this video in my limbo language. Arari, Zaran Tomang, Tokman, Bhulukman Tungamu. Was in the Zaran, he answered me, Sapia, Yamber, Yari Tungsam, Sapok Tungma, Sapok Tungma, Sokai Bumba, Zamma called Gudara, Tomang Zama, and left. Even though uh, they may never have set food in a classroom, uh, for me, each of these farmers were a professor. Through deep observation of nature, seeing the same tree in the same place, season after season, this knowledge system has emerged. To the farmers that I spoke to, I began to decipher my own place. I began to learn to hear about their stories, their uh, their deity towards nature. Like them, many indigenous people have thousands of stories, tales, myths, practices that are under uh, that are under uh, privileged in the context of Nepal. This knowledge is being ignored. Um, this knowledge has been our source of survival, our source of medicine, our source of communication, and our source of our culture. Those indigenous people have hundreds of years of knowledge of uh, their tribal practices, surviving techniques, sharing the sentiments with the place, nature, and biodiversity, passing from one generation to the next. Important knowledge that that has stood uh, the text of time and evolved through many crises from climate change uh, to natural calamities, pandemics to earthquakes to effort of Sanskritization and internal colonization of languages, but still they are surviving. As a youth, I have learned that this knowledge is precious and must be protected and better understood and uh, that basically only have a few years left before it could be lost. Through this Indigenous Knowledge Portal project, we aim to highlight those stories uh, to the masses and keep it as, a, as an um, archival source for all which can be a source of inspiration, source of research, and the whole world can learn about and from them. Our dream is now uh, that in this indigenous knowledge portal, people speak in their own mother languages, 
sharing their knowledge and practices that came from generations to generation. So we are expanding it from the plains to the uh, from uh, plains to the hills, the high mountains, creating hopefully thousands of videos to protect this precious knowledge. The knowledge about plants, birds, um, animals, the stories of fisher folks, farmers, weavers, herders, and so on. The project aims to immerse uh, with the idea of creating young minds to see the potential in their own landscape. And with that saying, we teach our young star, local youngsters and students to document their stories. Now we are training other youth fellows of different vertical gradients from Koshitapu to Kanchanjunga to document uh, the knowledge as I have done. At the end, um, I would like to end my presentation with the video of Papung about the culture of worshipping uh, the la lake. <laughs> those presentations. Um, they were both very inspiring and grounding for me as an artist and writer. Um, another reminder that I don't want the art world to be the only home for my own work and that um, to build on what Nayantara was just saying as well. And also it's really lovely to see um, the broader ecologies and exchanges that are happening between Kathmandu and the work of Photo Circle and all of your works also. Um, your presentation in particular resonated a lot with things that are happening in Australia around Indigenous knowledges, like very, very much so um, with friends um, and colleagues that I've worked with and in different spaces. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask about, which is something that I struggle with also, is um, maybe this, like I recognise the need to document is so important, um, at least from the context in Australia that I'm familiar with. Uh, but then documenting is quite different to living um, in some way as well, although documenting is a form of living um, and uh, embodying the knowledges that you're documenting to a degree as well. I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on um, the lived practices of these knowledges kind of in relationship or in contrast to the documentation of them. Um, it looks like there's a lot of young people and it's the kind of um, young Indigenous activists and the media training that you've been doing looks so exciting. I'm also just wondering um, 
about the uh, everyday practices um, that the farmers slash kind of um, knowledge holders or professors that you've been working with, um, if that is translating down to younger generations and the relationship between that sort of practice and um, and documentation as a as a form also. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, I can try to translate. My question translate Gorunki. Actually, I'm going to try to translate the question a little bit. No, no. I think it did. Um, so, while it is one of the thank you to the presentation, Kulayoni, one the Australia were down work also, Australian context map on you could add the way lagoon, so one could have you would have indigenous knowledge like document Gorni Zun Prokria or Dostavi the Goran Kokura, Rubani Zunam, the Gorda Irazo. Uh, to document Gornura, they would have lived knowledge, Unzani, Zun, the unique of no life my practicing boy. So, this mate of this go part of the difference between the two and do it a bit, go some manda, you know, just um, every day, I'm a lay of a. Uh, Afno Jivan Jira Heko Belama, Thaboy Kukura, or this like them actively, um, just the youth fellows, Lene, you know, Israeli media training, Lear, or Nay, document Gornura to Afno life, my everyday life, my say, uh, you know, Buama about a sick day, Buzwaj about a sick day, uh, this like incorporate Gorda Ilanu, Map Pora Kotwatis Kudutako, some Monda. Um, thank you, Narendra Didi. Obviously, um, uh, the younger generations that we are training and they are documenting is also the uh, child children of uh, farmers and they are also doing the day to day activity as well so but but uh, for my experience even though i am also a doctor, daughter of farmer i have been doing the same thing uh, from uh, my childhood but the knowledge that the typical knowledge about the plants and other things that are also new for me sometimes. So when uh, individually it, de it depends um, the, the knowledge that differs one, one person from another according to their geography, their uh, culture um, and their family as well. So. I am from Limbu community, Limbu ethnic uh, group. So from uh, there are in Nepal there are lots of uh, hundreds of ethnic groups. So they have a uh, different culture, different understanding, and uh, different uh, learning experiences as well. So while uh, documenting the knowledge of uh, different uh, communities, different ethnic groups. So for me it is also uh, for new thing and learning as well. So through the video, we document, uh, we try to document their um, real life uh, knowledge. Um, just like, um, uh, for example, in Kositapu, it is completely plain, and uh, uh, there are some fish of fox. And uh, in Kositapu, there are uh, like thousands of birds. So there are bird, gui uh, bird guys as well. So they know about their um, them. Uh, but I don't know about them, about, about them. So from their saying, um, I document and then I got chance to learn about that. Uh, uh, um, uh, next, there are fisher fox as well. So we live uh, from generations to generations uh, doing fish, uh, fishing. And they, uh, they live their life uh, as a fisherman. Um, um, they earn economy from uh, that f uh, fishing, so that are their day-to-day uh, -day activity, and that 
um i just i i, I just learned um but my family my it it ethnic group is a uh, different so i know about that but uh for fisher fisher folks that is completely different and if you go to um high himalayas there are herders who uh, move around uh, uh different locations um uh, herding the uh, yaks um so their life is uh, different so every time when uh, young people are like me um they are from the local community so they got chance to learn um uh, new things from other communities as well um i think uh, i don't know it uh, answers your question or not <laughs> thank you Thank you. Questions thoughts. Um my question is for uh, DBG. Nepali ma sodha huncha ki angrezi mai sodha. Sorry. Tapala je थारू भाषा में नाम भन्न पिछाड़ी को अब भन न एटा लोकल बिलीफ ट्रेडिशनल अब नरेटिव जो हम सुनो मान्यता यो चरा यो गए मान भाष को समुदाय में अलग मैं अब भन न मेरे जिज्ञासा अब अलग को बदलि परिवेश में पैला को यह जी मता विश्वास कंजर्वेशन को तरीका होने अ बदलि परिवेश में है अब पैला को बुढ़ापा तो गई सके अलग को युवाओं के कस्त भन कोपिंग मेकानिजम जस्त चाहिए अपना कंजर्वेशन रो भन न ट्रेडिशन को बीच को तालमेल मिला थैंक यू फर दिशन बेसिकली लाइक सीन्स आई वर्क अलरेडी यू नो अबाउट माई प्रोफेसन सो it is uh, that is my very uh, golden opportunity for me to work uh, for both conservation and tourism it is related with uh, you know my, like uh, um, uh, wildlife environment and livelihood so i'm working with various uh, different uh, you know community and then uh, under like uh, me uh, there are 60 nature guides in our districts so uh, nowadays uh, yeah, youngsters are really not interested and then they are not especially some some of them will they will get up uh, like uh, they will get uh, interested but they don't have any opportunity those opportunities to learn but i'm working very closely with people like a uh, uh, nature guides so nature guides are like a uh, ambassadors and i believe since i came from the same uh, field i believe they are the ambassadors and they are very important to um, like uh, for sustaining the uh, conservation and tourism so and then any like informations they give uh, to tourists and uh, they take that uh, information so that's why we have to make uh, our nature guides um, uh, to understand uh, conservation and uh, they need a lot of knowledge and updates about uh like a um, uh, environment and uh, wildlife and uh, conservation and so on so uh basically like when i came from tharu community and since i'm uh, I, i've been working in this field and i came to know about the value and importance of local knowledge so this is all my feelings this is how i understood myself and that's why uh, i i'm very keen collecting all those uh, traditional knowledge and experiences and beliefs and now i'm transferring to the community uh, through the nature guides association through the uh, students and then i have been working with uh, youngsters you know young like a uh, 5 to 15 years boys and uh, um, girls you know 
like I started working with them uh, about 26 years old ago, as soon as I started working in the um, uh, tourism field. So once I understood the importance of wildlife, so this is how like I'm not uh, sharing with them uh, only lo local knowledge, also the uh, importance, also the like uh, English name, and then why they are important, how we can help, how we can share with your family, and that's why I'm working with uh, youngsters and then nature guides and women groups, uh, like and also various other uh, sectors. And I have planned to document, uh, like, uh, just working on birds, and then in the future I want to uh, document, like, uh, uh, other wildlife, like uh, reptiles, amphibians, and then birds, uh, sorry, animals as well. Uh, does it make sense? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.